Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in today. If you haven't done so already, please dial into the audio portion of this call using the phone number that was emailed to you or listen in using your computer speakers. Today's session is being recorded and will be made available on the Exit Realty YouTube channel as well as on FocusOnGoodHealth.com later this week. At Exit Realty Corp International, we believe that health and wellness is imperative to a better quality of life. To that end, our Focus on Good Health initiative was created to offer tips and tools promoting wellness both at work and at home. My name is Samantha Morris and I am the Focus on Good Health liaison. I am so pleased to welcome you all to our first of four webinars featuring guest speakers on a variety of subjects including nutrition, mindfulness, fitness, and more. I highly recommend grabbing a pen and paper for this session because it is packed with information and tips that I'm certain you'll want to make note of. Today's special guest speaker is Dr. Greg Barron. Dr. Barron is the Chief Operating Officer and co-founder of Dream Wellness with four locations in California and New York. Dr. Barron holds a master's degree in sports health science with a minor in sports nutrition and a doctorate degree in chiropractic from Life University in Georgia. Prior to earning his chiropractic degree, Dr. Barron was a New York State physical fitness champion and a certified personal trainer through the American Council of Exercise. He also served as the USPGA chiropractor for the US Open in 2009. Both in the U.S. and abroad, Dr. Barron has donated his services and expertise to help others in need. He has performed scoliosis screenings for local community outreach programs and served on a healthcare mission team to Panama, where he provided chiropractic services to high-ranking government officials and the ambassador to Panama. Following the events of September 11, 2001, Dr. Barron received a Distinguished Service Award from the American Red Cross for providing chiropractic services during the relief effort at Ground Zero to members of the U.S. Armed Forces, New York Police Department, Fire Department, and other relief and rescue workers. An active member of the New York Chiropractic Council, the World Chiropractic Alliance, and the Chiropractic Leadership Alliance, Dr. Barron is also a devoted martial artist, having earned the rank of black belt in karate and aikido. He lives in New York with his wife, Danielle, and two sons, Jaden and Jake. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Barron to today's webinar. Dr. B? Thank you so much for that introduction. I would like to take a moment to thank Samantha Morris, who, without her assistance, an initiative like this, the Focus on Good Health initiative, wouldn't even exist. So thank you so much. And I'd also like to thank the people that are on this call. It's obviously 12 o'clock in the afternoon. There are many things that you could be doing right now on a Wednesday at 12 noon, and the fact that you've chosen to spend about 30 minutes with me on this call means a lot to me. So thank you so much. So there's four options for this webinar. Whenever a webinar is delivered, you have information, motivation, inspiration, and transformation. So some people are looking for information. Some people are looking for motivation. Some people are looking for inspiration. And some people are looking for transformation. So I want you to think about the nature of what you want to gather from this information so you have a map to choose from. Okay. Now, in the field of healthcare, there are four different options. There's the treatment of disease. There's the maintenance of health. There's the prevention of future illness. And then there is the promotion of wellness. So the practice of medicine typically focuses on treatment, maintenance, and prevention. Wellness practitioners, like myself, are entirely focused on the promotion of wellness, actually building health inside the human body. So all the information that I'm going to present today is strictly from the place of promoting wellness as opposed to treating disease or maintaining something which makes no sense because you can't maintain the body because the body is dynamic. Okay, So we're about promoting wellness. That's what we're going to do in the next 30 minutes. We want to build health within your body so that you can improve the quality of your life. So I'm going to begin with a quote. Doubt and fear are the currency of deception, and together they both sow the seeds of complacency. Confusion paralyzes people, while clarity empowers people to take action. Okay, so when people don't know, in the field of, of wellness, there's a lot of misinformation. People don't know what to do. And to, when people don't know what to do, they fail to act. So hopefully I'll be able to provide you with a little bit of clarity so that you can take action in the correct direction. 
Now, the name of this webinar is Spring into Wellness, and spring is really a metaphor for a brand new beginning. When we think of spring, we, want, we think of the five R's, rebirth, rejuvenation, renewal, regrowth, and a chance to review our goals. Okay? We actually have a beautiful day here. The sun is shining. Think of it as a brand new beginning for you, for your business, and for your life. So to do that, we're going to use, I'm going to introduce the acronym. The name of our company is DREAM. And I'll give you our mission, our vision, our purpose, and our philosophy. And I want you to think about those four things for yourself and for your own business. Do you have a mission, a vision, a purpose, and a philosophy statement that you can fall back on? Very, very important. So our mission is to guide people toward the realization that they are activated from within and that wellness comes from the inside out. Make no mistake about it, ladies and gentlemen. Wellness comes from the inside out. It does not come from the outside in. Our vision is a global paradigm shift with worldwide participation in a wellness promotion model. Remember before I talked about the four different options, treatment, maintenance, prevention, and promotion. We are all about creating a paradigm shift where people participate in a wellness promotion model as opposed to attempting to treat disease that's already there. Our purpose is to bridge the gap from the reactive system of sick care toward a proactive model of wellness by providing the tools and venue for one's journey, such as a webinar like this. And finally, our philosophy is that the quantity of wellness in your life will always be determined by the quality of your particular dream. So DREAM is an acronym. It stands for the five facets of wellness, diet, relaxation, exercise, being in adjustment, and mental wellness. So if you look at that acronym, you'll see a prism makes up the A. The reason why the prism is being in adjustment is because if you send light through a prism, you get the visible light spectrum, the colors of the rainbow, Roy G. Biv. What we wanted to do is we wanted to send the word wellness through a prism, and out came its component parts, D-R-E-A-M. So DREAM does not stand for services. Rather, they are facets of wellness. And within each particular letter, there are literally 50 or 100 different services that correspond to each letter. So I'm going to use this acronym as a system today. So I'm going to present one principle from each of these letters, because I only have 25 minutes to do that. I'm going to present one principle from each letter to give you some structure and guide you on your way. Okay? So we're going to begin with D. And the D portion of DREAM today, we're going to talk about the skinny on fats, how learning to eat the right fats will make you permanently thin. And this area is kind of like an alphabet soup because omega fatty acids are, we use letters to abbreviate them because they have long names. So instead of saying icosapentaenoic and docosahexaenoic acid, it's easier for me to say EPA and DHA. Okay? And this area can get a little technical, but don't worry. You'll have an opportunity at the end if you text live the dream to 44222, which you'll, you'll hear throughout this presentation. You'll have an opportunity to receive the slide deck and some corresponding notes. So in case you're trying to write this down and you miss something, don't worry, you'll be able to get this information. Okay, so I want you to make three columns. I want you to put the number three in the left-hand column. I want you to put the number six in the middle column. And I want you to put the number nine in the right-hand column. Okay, and in the three column, we talk about EPA, DHA, and ALA. Again, that's EPA, DHA, and ALA. Okay, again, alphabet soup. Those are omega-3 fatty acids. By the way, there's also another omega-3 fatty acid called ETA, and that's from green-lipped muscle in New Zealand. Tremendous for pain relief. Very, very anti-inflammatory. It actually shuts down the mechanism and the enzyme, the COX-2 enzyme, that pain relievers like Advil and Tylenol shut down without any corresponding bleeding or liver damage from those medications. Again, that's ETA, a very rare omega-3 fatty acid that you'll be hearing more about. For the purposes of this conversation, EPA, DHA, and ALA are important because most people are familiar with wild fish versus farm-raised fish. And people, when we talk about fish, we're talking about the difference with farm-raised fish consuming genetically modified corn and soy. That's what they eat, as opposed to wild fish, which eat plankton in the ocean. Now remember, whatever those fish eat is what you eat when you eat those fish. So if you consume farm-raised fish that eat genetically modified corn and soy, then you're consuming genetically modified corn and soy. If you consume wild fish that consume plankton, then you're get a, getting the beneficial omega fatty acids, the EPA and DHA, that's in those foods. 
Fish do not have EPA and DHA in them. They actually receive their EPA and DHA from the foods that they consume. So you always want to go with wild fish as opposed to farm-raised fish. Very important. Those are our omega-3 fatty acids. There's another omega-3 called ALA, which is for vegetarians and vegans who do not consume fish. If you don't consume fish, that's okay. You just need to make sure that you supplement with an EPA or DHA supplement. The ALA is like Robin, and the EPA and DHA are like Batman. So you want to make sure to try and get them both. Your body tries to convert ALA into EPA and DHA, but it has a problem doing that because the enzyme that's responsible for that conversion, if you consume sugar and flour, which most people do, that enzyme cannot make that conversion. So it's very important. If you are a vegetarian, you must supplement with EPA and DHA. Okay? Omega-6 fatty acid. In the middle column, you have LA and GLA. And LA is basically responsible for eczema, dermatitis, asthma, rheumatoid arthritis, atherosclerosis, diabetes, obesity, and cancer. The overabundance of LA, which stands for linoleic acid, is responsible for more disease in this country than probably any other uh, situation. So the overproduction of LA, the overconsumption of LA, basically soybean oil, sunflower oil, all the oils that are in those chips and cookies that people eat on a regular basis increases levels of LA, which increases and builds the production of these inflammatory compounds that create inflammation in the body. Now, most people think that omega-6s are bad, but there's a super healing omega-6 called GLA. GLA, which stands for gamma linolenic acid, is tremendous for decreasing inflammation. It can decrease things like eczema, dermatitis, asthma, rheumatoid arthritis, atherosclerosis, decreases the incidence of diabetes. It can cause people to lose weight, and it decreases cancer production as well. So GLA is the beneficial omega-6. It's also tremendous for cramping and hot flashes that can be associated with menstrual cycles and menopause. So again, those are our omega-6s. Finally, in the right-hand column, we have our omega-9 called OA, and this stands for oleic acid. When we think of omega-9, we think of avocado oil and olive oil, or, or avocados and olives. Now, when we talk about cooking, avocado oil has one of the highest smoke points for cooking, about 500 to 550 degrees. So avocado oil is a tremendous cooking oil if you want to stay safe and avoid your oil from turning trans fatty acid. Olive oil has a much slower smoke point. So if you're going to cook with olive oil, you want to cook with a cheap, refined olive oil. Cheaper, refined olive oils have much higher smoke points, so they're much safer for cooking. If you're cooking with first cold-pressed extra virgin olive oil, that has a very, very low smoke point. So you want to make sure if you're going to be cooking with olive oil, you want to use a cheap, refined olive oil as opposed to a high-quality high olive oil. The higher-quality olive oils you always want to use raw. Finally, I want to talk about trans fatty acids. Most people have heard that trans fatty acids are bad. And there is a beneficial trans fatty acid called CLA, which converts fat tissue into lean muscle mass. Tremendous for decreasing weight loss. CLA is found in grass-fed animal products, grass-fed dairy, grass-fed butter, grass-fed steak. Okay? CLA is much better absorbed in the body when it comes from food as opposed to supplement. It can be taken by supplement, but better absorbed if, if it's in your food. The only way to get CLA is in grass-fed products. And finally, there's a saturated fat. Just like trans fatty acids, there is a saturated fat. Most people think saturated fats are bad. There is a saturated fat called a medium-chain triglyceride. Saturated fats come in short chain, medium chain, and long chain. There is a medium-chain saturated fat, which is coconut oil, which your body doesn't store as fat. It actually burns coconut as energy. So you definitely want to increase your consumption of coconut. Very, very important to learn how to eat the right fats. Learning to eat the right fats can make you permanently thin. A great principle, omega-3, omega-6, omega-9, CLA, and MCTs. Again, an alphabet soup of information. So the R portion of dream wellness, relaxation, most people think that relaxation is a timeout. It's a, they think it's a passive process. But relaxation is actually an active process where your brain and your body get a chance to rebuild. So the principle that I'm going to talk about for relaxation is float therapy. And float therapy is something that is new. Not a lot of people are that familiar with it. So let's provide this information so that when you hear about it, you'll be a little more educated. With float therapy, 
there's a big difference between magnesium sulfate and sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is table salt. Magnesium sulfate is Epsom salt, which is actually placed into a tank of water. Now, when you place Epsom salt, about 1,000 pounds, into a tank of water, rather than falling into the water, your body actually floats on the surface of the water. And while you're floating on the surface of the water, after a period of about 10 minutes, your brain experiences an anti-gravity environment. And all sensory input into the brain shuts off. When that happens, you can actually de-automate the nerve system. What do I mean by de-automating the nervous system? There's a great book by Charles Duhigg. It's called The Power of Habit. And in The Power of Habit, Duhigg talks about the, the nature of how habits are created, what he refers to as the habit loop, which involves a cue that triggers a routine that provides your brain with a reward. By de-automating the nerve system in a float tank, you can actually interrupt the habit loop and change some of these negative habits. Some people are smokers. Some people are drinking too much alcohol. Some people are emotional eaters. Some people eat right before they go to sleep. You can actually rewire the nervous system in a float tank to interrupt some of these habits that are not serving you. Okay? The other benefit of it being using float therapy, of being in a float tank, is the magnesium sulfate is really, really important. It's actually one of the easiest ways to get magnesium into the body is through the skin. So when you're floating, the magnesium enters through the skin, can regulate enzymes that actually decrease inflammation. It can decrease blood pressure. It'll relax your muscles, and it'll actually increase blood flow. So when people are under stress, and I know no one on this call experiences stress, but for those of us who do experience stress, stress will cause the release of adrenaline. And when your body releases adrenaline, it rapidly decreases magnesium. So for a lot of people that are under consistent stress, they have very, very low levels of magnesium. Float therapy is a great way to bring magnesium into the body so it can decrease inflammation and it can ultimately decrease stress. The other thing that people notice when they float is it feels like you're floating in space. It's the easiest way that I could explain it because some float places, some float centers actually shut off the lights. There's no sound. It's completely dark, completely soundproof, and it gives you the feeling that you're actually floating in space. It is the ultimate meditation. But people have reported tremendous increase in creative problem solving because all of the competing information is not entering into the brain. So the ability to create creatively problem solve becomes markedly increased when somebody experiences float therapy. If you haven't heard about th float therapy yet, you will. It will be coming to a town near you very soon. So the E portion of dream, we're talking about exercise. And with exercise, we're talking about fertilize to thrive because we're talking about spring. And just like your lawn, if you don't fertilize your lawn, it doesn't do nearly as well as if you prepare and fertilize your lawn prior to the sun and the longer days that we're experiencing. So with exercise, I want to talk about basically something that I refer to as miracle grow for the brain. Okay? It's called BDNF, Brain Derived Neurotrophic Factor. Okay. BDNF is actually, the easiest way to explain it is it's a protein which is like the biological link between your thought, your emotions, and your movement. BDNF responds to movement. What it actually does is it binds to receptors in the synapses of your brain, and it increases the voltage and signal strength of your brain. Yes, your brain is actually electric. It also increases a neurotransmitter called serotonin, which is responsible for learning and self-esteem. People who have low levels of serotonin tend to be depressed. Another thing that BDNF does is it actually competes against a protein called beta amyloid. And beta amyloid is a protein that builds up in your brain when you don't get enough sleep. You actually have an internal janitor-like mechanism that does a sweep cleaning of beta amyloid while you sleep. So if you don't sleep long enough, if, you, if you're getting three or four hours or you're in, in experiencing insomnia-like situation where you are not sleeping, this beta amyloid builds up in the brain. It doesn't get washed out when you sleep. What we now know is that the fastest path to Alzheimer's and dementia is lack of sleep due to this plaque called beta amyloid. So increasing BDNF actually decreases the beta amyloid in the brain so rather than experiencing the plaque that leads to brain fog 
and clogs the connections in your brain, you actually have the BDNF binding to the receptors in your brain, and it increases, again, the voltage and the signal strength, and it turns on those neurotransmitters that make you feel good. Very, very important. It's like the darling of the clinical nutrition, the darling of the wellness industry. It is the hot topic right now. Some other ways to increase BDNF besides exercise are intermittent fasting. Here's what I recommend. Think of skipping breakfast on Monday, skipping lunch on Tuesday, and skipping dinner on Wednesday, skipping breakfast on Thursday, skipping lunch on Friday, and skipping dinner on Saturday. Actually having the intermittent nature of your eating schedule, which confuses the nervous system and prevents the biological brain from plateauing. That's a nice, easy way to increase BDNF, intermittent fasting. Another way to increase BDNF is decreasing your sugar and flour consumption, which improves everything. But increasing BDNF is another thing that decreasing sugar and flour does. Sunlight is another thing. Now we're in the spring. More sun increases vitamin D3. With the vitamin D3 increase, we also get an increase in BDNF. Curcumin, the active ingredient of turmeric, is another way to increase BDNF. Green tea, which has something called epigallocatechin gallate 9, EGCG9, increases the production of BDNF in the brain. The skins of grapes have a product called resveratrol in them. Grape skin and grape seed extract also increases the production of BDF. And finally, DHA, docosahexanoic acid, that omega-3 that I was talking about before, the DHA consumption increases levels of BDNF in the brain. Again, think of BDNF as fertilizer. Think of it as miracle Grow for the brain. Anybody who's done any planting or landscaping knows that if you put miracle Grow onto the landscaping, onto the plants, they do better than if you don't keep it simple, okay? BDNF. The A portion of DREAM, we're going to talk about being in adjustment, not a chiropractic adjustment, but being in adjustment. When we talk about being in adjustment, we're talking about communication is key. There we are looking at the nerve cells. We are looking at the information superhighway of the digital nerve system. Yes, for those of you who are computer savvy, there is not only an internet on the outside, there is an internet of communication within your body. So I want you to think of body work this spring, finding whether it be a massage therapist, whether it be an acupuncturist, whether it be a chiropractor. I want you to think of body workers as human electricians. And think of this system that you're looking at right now as telephone wires inside your body. The last thing you want is your brain trying to communicate with an organ, a cell, or a tissue in your body, and there is static on the lines. What body workers do is by making adjustments or by massaging the body or the needles used by an acupuncturist, what that does is it actually decreases the static on the lines of communication so that your brain and your body can communicate more effectively. There is an information exchange happening inside your body at all times. And you want to make sure that there is no traffic or as little traffic as possible on this information superhighway. This is what being in adjustment is all about. And finally, the M portion of Dream Wellness today, we're going to talk about mental flossing. We're going to talk about a principle called the mental migration map. You're not going to read about the migra mental migration map anywhere because I created it. Okay? It's based on the be, do, have principle who you be, right? A lot of people are focused on what they need to do so that they can get what they want. But the do is just the bridge between the be and the have. So there's five P's to the mental migration map. Think of, of writing a triangle. Draw a triangle on the page and separate that triangle into five levels so that your bottom level is the, the most broad, the widest. And as you move up the triangle, it gets smaller. So you have your five different areas. Philosophy belongs on your bottom. That is the base of your mental migration map. Okay? And your philosophy, you want to think of three questions. What do I believe? Why do I believe it? And what am I going to do about it? That's how you formulate your philosophy. The next level up is your purpose. Why you do what you do. Everything has a purpose in this world. God doesn't create anything that doesn't have a purpose. You're no different. You've got to figure out what your purpose is. Above purpose is your psychology. And how do you refine your psychology? Affirmations, 
visualizations, just like Geigo, garbage in, garbage out with a computer, same thing with you. You gotta put the right stuff into your subconscious mind so your subconscious mind can feed your conscious mind that information so that you can take the right actions and make the right choices. Your philosophy, your purpose, and your psychology are the B portion of your mental migration map. Okay, the next level up is the do portion. Those are your procedures. That's, those are the day in, day out things that you do every day. That's where most people focus. Most people focus on what they need to do. Very few people focus on who they need to be. Let me repeat that. That is a million dollar idea. Most people focus on what they need to do, but very few people focus on who they need to be because they haven't formulated their philosophy, they haven't established their purpose, and they have not refined their psychology. Remember, the procedures are just a do, and the do is just a bridge between the be and the have, okay? The fifth level up, the last P, is prosperity, which obviously is the have, what we're all striving for, okay? Most people are focused on what they need to do, and then they're trying to figure out why they do or don't have the level of prosperity that they're looking for. I promise you, if you migrate your mind, if you use the mental migration map and migrate your mind toward who do I need to be or become so that I'll naturally do the things that I should be doing and ultimately get what it is that I want. That is the be, do, have, the five Ps to the mental migration map. And of course, here's my crew, this is my why. We talk about having your why all the time. I want to talk about being in adjustment and quickly talk about the five fitness plates. Okay, all of us are spinning five plates. A physical fitness plate, an emotional fitness plate, a spiritual fitness plate, a relational fitness plate, and a financial fitness plate. And just like those acrobats in the circus who are holding those posts, those plates are spinning on our posts, right? And if we take our focus off of one of those plates, it has the ability to slow down, fall off its post, hit the floor, and crack into a thousand pieces. Everyone on this phone call knows someone who has pursued financial fitness at the expense of their physical or emotional fitness. There are other people who have pursued their physical fitness at the expense of time with their family. Okay, you must be able to shift your focus and when one of these plates slows down, it's critically important to make sure that you put your focus back onto that particular plate. Give it a quick spin so that you can get it moving again, and then you can quickly adapt and adjust to where your attention needs to be placed. Very, very important. You can have it all. My message to everybody on this call is you do not have to pursue one at the expense of the other. You do not have to pursue financial fitness at the expense of your physical fitness. In fact, if you focus on your physical and emotional fitness, I promise you, you'll have a much better chance of reaping the financial rewards that you so desperately desire. So I want to end with a story. An elderly carpenter is set to, re he, he's had enough, he's set to retire. He wants to retire, he wants to move down to Florida. And uh, the carpenter tells his employer, you know what, I've had enough and I'm leaving. And the employer says, listen, I want to ask you for one last favor. Can you please build one more home for me? And the carpenter's like, oh, man, you know, my mind is already in Florida. I'm laying on a beach sipping a pina colada, and now you want me to build a house. Fine, I'll do it. And you could tell right from the beginning that the carpenter's heart is not in his work. He cuts corners. He uses inferior materials. He doesn't lay a proper foundation. But he builds the house. He gets it done. And finally, the carpenter and the employer go to, go to see the home. And while they're looking at the home, the employer takes the keys to the house, places the keys into the carpenter's hand, and says, this is your house, my gift to you. The carpenter is stunned. If only he had known that he was building his own home. Done it so differently. And so it is with us. You see. Life is a do-it-yourself project. Every day you hammer a nail, you erect a wall, and you lay a foundation. The choices and the actions that you make today will build, will literally build the house you live in tomorrow. So please, 
please, please, to everybody on this phone call, build wisely. I want to thank everybody for joining us. And again, please make sure to live your dream every day. If you want a copy of this slide deck with corresponding notes, please take out your phone, text live the dream with no spaces to 44222. It will ask you for your email. If you put your email into your phone, you will immediately receive this information. Thank you so much. God bless. What a fantastic presentation, Dr. Barron. Thank you so very much. What you've shared on BDNF and the five Ps are concepts so immediately applicable to our everyday lives. Talk about a wealth of valuable information. Um, Dr. Barron, I'm fascinated to learn more about float tank therapy. Um, can you explain a little bit more how it is different um, than, let's say, for example, running your own Epsom salts bath at home? Yeah, so if you try and recreate float therapy at home, you would literally need about 1,000 pounds of Epsom salts to create a floating environment for your body. So to do that, obviously, from a cost perspective, it wouldn't really make sense for you to do that. The other thing is when you go to a float facility, the water is constantly uh, being filtered. So for you to create that environment would actually be quite a mess if you tried to do it for yourself. The other thing that would, would be a problem for somebody trying to recreate that in the privacy of their own home is sensory stimulation. Float sensors are designed to create, pull away everything from the brain. So whether it be light, whether it be sound, it's completely creating a soundproof, dark environment where when you are floating, the brain has the ability to enter into an anti-gravity environment. Usually it takes anywhere from 10 minutes to 20 minutes. Me personally, during my float, um, it took about 15 minutes where I'm aware of my thoughts and I'm aware of the fact that I'm laying in a tank in someone's office. But after about 15 minutes, your brain disengages. It is, a, it is a unique feeling. I don't have anything else that I can compare it to unless you experience it. What people find with the floating in the beginning is when you're alone with your thoughts, any demons and any, any secrets that you have come forward. So initially, people find their first or second or third float. Sometimes it takes a few floats for you to feel comfortable being alone with your thoughts. A lot of us, because we are constantly bombarded by information, our brain hasn't been silent. It hasn't been quiet. One of the reasons why people can't creatively problem solve is because they have so much competing information entering into the nerve system. So when you remove that competing information, um, your brain has the ability to enter into and open up circuitry that has not been opened up. So the float centers are designed for that environment. Each person that enters into a float center, when you're entering into the room, you're getting a brand new uh, filtered water with a brand new set of salt. So you don't have to worry about, from a sanitation perspective, all the new, new float therapy centers are very clean. They're very safe. It is, a, it is an experience that I highly, highly recommend. In the field of health and wellness, tremendous. Tremendous for the R and M portion of dream wellness, and really all. All, all the different facets of dream wellness are, are increased and improved with the flotation. Very interesting. I, I imagine that there will be these float facilities popping up uh, in all of our states and provinces <laughs> soon. Um, it's, it's relatively new, but I recently just heard about it a few months ago, so it'll be interesting to see and experience for sure. Um, wonderful. Thank you so much again, Dr. Barron, for taking the time uh, today to spend with us. Just a reminder to our audience that this session is being recorded and we will make it available online in the next couple of days. Um, as Dr. B mentioned, please feel free to reach out to him directly by texting Live the Dream to 44222. And if you're on Facebook, join our Focus on Good Health Facebook group. Um, we can certainly continue uh, the conversation in that group. Our next Focus on Good Health uh, webinar will air on Wednesday. Wednesday, June 29th at 12 p.m. Eastern. Stay tuned for information about our upcoming guest speaker by visiting the events page on focusongoodhealth.com uh, and certainly subscribe to our RSS feed so that you won't miss out on any updates. Thank you all again and make today a great day. Bye-bye everyone.